Yes. Hello there. I'm Drew. Welcome to my video. All right. So today I uh, thought I'd do kind of a response video to a number of people that uh, make me rather upset because there's a debate between the uh, creationists and the atheists on a very, very stupid topic, which is Nazis and Hitler. Okay, so I'm here in my German section of my library, and I'm here because apparently having a lot of books gets stupid people upset. What can I say? I've had a lot of complaints when I made uh, videos in front of my library here, which got people upset, claiming that it was intimidating them. Well, what are you going to do? So anyways, the video today is, um, I'm going to read the leaflet, their first leaflet, off of this group, the White Rose, which was a group of young uh, Germans who uh, led a resistance to the Nazis and were caught and executed. Most of them are. And when I made a, a video about this long, many, well, I don't know, quite a few years ago, I had sang their uh, song they had adopted for their movement, Die, Die Gedanken sind frei, which was Thoughts are Free, which is an old German song from the uh, revolution against the French. So here's the members of the White Rose. Han Scholl, executed February 22nd, 1943. Sophie Scholl, executed February 22nd, 1943. Caught distributing leaflets, which I'm going to read the first one. Uh, Christoph. Executed February 22nd, 1943. Professor Kurt Huber. Executed July 13th, 1943. Alexander Schmorella. Hope I didn't say that too bad. Executed July 13th, 1943. Willie Groff. Executed October 12th, 1943. Photograph of a group of them. Meeting in their clandestine get-togethers. And Hancho. All right, so I'm going to read their first leaflet. Let's see, which they put out in a series, issued four of them, and then two uh, after. Prepared in the summer and fall of 1942. Nothing is so unworthy of a civilized nation as allowing itself to be governed, in quotes, without opposition by an irresponsible clique that is yielded to base instinct. It is certain that today every honest German is ashamed of his government. Who among us has any conception of the dimensions of shame that will befall us and our children? when one day the veil has fallen from our eyes and the most horrible of crimes, crimes that infinitely outdistance every human measure, reach the light of day. If the German people are already so corrupted and spiritually crushed that they do not raise a hand, frivolously trusting in a questionable faith in lawful order in history, if they surrender man's highest principle, that which raises him above all other gods, creatures, his free will, 
If they abandon the will to take defensive action and turn the wheel of history and thus subject it to their own rational derision, decision, if they are so devoid of all individuality, have already gone so far along the road towards turning into a spiritless and cowardly mass, then yes, they deserve their downfall. Goethe speaks of the Germans as a tragic people, like the Jews and the Greeks, but today it would appear rather they are spineless, willless herd of hanger-on, who now, the marrow sucked out of their bones, robbed of their center of stability, awaiting to be hounded to their destruction. So it seems, but it is not so. Rather, by means of gradual, treacherous, systematic abuse, the system has put every man into a spiritual prison. Only now, finding himself lying in fetters, has he become aware of his fate. Only a few recognized the threat of ruin, and the reward for their heroic warning was death. We will have more to say about the fate of these persons. If everyone waits until the other man makes a start, the messengers of avenging Nemesis will come steadily closer. Then even the last victim will have been cast senselessly to the maw of, maw of insatiable demon. Therefore, every individual conscious of his responsibility as a member of Christian and Western civilization must defend himself as best he can at this late hour. He must work against the scourges of mankind, against fascism, and any similar system of totalitarianism. Offer passive resistance, resistance, wherever you may be. Forestall the spread of this atheistic war machine before it is too late, before the last cities like Cologne have been reduced to rubble, and before the nation's last young man has given his blood on some battlefield for the hubris of a subhuman. Do not forget that every people deserves the regime it is willing to endure. From Friedrich Schiller's The Law Giving of Lycurgus and Solon. By the way, this is Schiller. And his uh, essay on Lycurgus and Solon is in this copy. If you like copies, I can get you copies. Viewed in relation to its purposes, the law code of Lycurgus, by the way, he, uh, he was the tyrant who ran Sparta, is a masterpiece of political science and knowledge of human nature. He desired a powerful, unassailable state, firmly established on its own principles. Political effectiveness and permanence were the goal toward which he strove, and he attained his goal to the full extent possible under the circumstances. But if one compares the purpose Lycurgus had in view with the purposes of mankind, then a deep abhorrence takes the place of the appropriation which we felt at first glance. Anything may be sacrificed to the good of the state except that end for which the state serves as a means. The state is never an end in itself. It is important only as a condition under which the purpose of man can be attained. And this purpose is none other than the development of all man's powers, his progress and improvement. If a state prevents the development of the capabilities which reside in man, if it interferes with the progress of the human spirit, then it is reprehensible and injurious, no matter how excellently devised, how perfect in its own way. Its very permanence in that case amounts more to a reproach than to a basis for fame. It becomes a prolonged evil, and the longer it endures, the more harmful it is. At the price of all moral feeling, a political system was set up, and the resources of the state were mobilized to that end. In Sparta, there was no conjugal love, no mother love, no filial devotion, no friendship. All men were citizens only, and all virtue was civic virtue. 
a law of the state made it the duty of Spartans to be inhumane to their slaves. In these unhappy victims of war, humanity itself was insulted and mistreated. In the Spartan Code of Law, the dangerous principle was promulgated that men are to be looked upon as means and not as ends, and the foundations of natural law and of morality were destroyed by that law. What an admirable sight is afforded by contrast by the rough soldier Gaius Marcius in his camp before Rome when he renounced vengeance and victory because he could not endure to see a mother's tears. The state of Lycurgus could endure only under one condition, that the spirit of the people remained quiescent. Hence, it could be maintained only if it failed to achieve the highest the sole purpose of a state. From Goethe's The Awakening of Epimenides, Act 2, Scene 4. Though he who has boldly risen from the abyss, through an iron will and cunning, may conquer half the world, yet to the abyss he must return. Already a terrible fear has seized him, in vain he will resist, and all who stand with him must perish in his fall. Hope. Now I find my good men are gathered in the night to wait in silence, not to sleep. And the glorious word of liberty, they whisper and murmur, till in unaccompanied strangeness on the steps of our temple, once again in delight they cry, Freedom! Freedom! Please make it as many copies of this leaflet as you can and distribute them. Okay, so this is, uh, that was the first leaflet distributed by the White Rose in Nazi Germany. And they got out five more before they were caught and tried and executed. And this is a very good book if you want to get their story, they get biography. It's got the leaflets, uh, it's got news articles when they were caught, it's got the transcript from the trials. Yes, so it's a very nice book. And, um, and I brought it up because I'm kind of upset about some of the debate I see going on between the so-called um, atheists and creationist, if, if, you, if you can call it that, but uh, they tend to play this, this Nazi card, or the Hitler card, in terms of saying, uh, was, was Hitler a, a Christian, or was he an atheist? And there you have it right there from a Mr., or one of the kids, right, atheistic war machine, and they've, and they said that before. That's it. Um, yeah. That's it. Um, do study Schiller. He's got some very good historical lessons when he taught at Jena. And uh, particularly his uh, essay or his lecture on universal history. To what end do we study universal history? Because uh, in the first part he talks about the teachers you're going to get, which are these two types of Bread, bread fed scholars and the universal thinker. Okay, so that's it. Thanks a lot. I'm, a, I'm Drew. And rate, subscribe, and comment. Alright, thanks. Bye bye.